It had been months since Agent Daniels had contacted Jaloran and the crew of the USS Lore. Previously, they had teamed up with Agent Daniels to defeat the Nakul and stop the Nakul's attempts to utilize time travel and a doomsday weapon. It had been over five months since they last had contact, and a lot can happen in that time. The USS Lore would be lost in a vicious battle with the Klingons. Jaloran and the survivors of the battle would now find themselves on the USS Noir, Sovereign Class. And then, out of nowhere, Daniels would contact them again. Terrorists were attempting to disrupt the timeline. Utilizing the temporal drive, the USS Noir would arrive in the 27th century, where they were to meet Daniels. The terrorists had allied themselves now with the Vorgons, whom were trying to abduct a scientist by the name of Cal Dano. Cal Dano had created a device, a phase inhibitor known as the Tox Utat, a device that would cause a massive amount of damage in the wrong hands. While investigating, the Noir would find a Vorgon ship in orbit around the planet that housed the facility that had Cal Dano. Initial scans would show neither Dano nor his device would be on board the ship, though Agent Daniels would advise caution. It's highly likely the Vorgons are at Cal Dano's research facility trying to get what they want. I'll take point on this one. I need you to keep an eye on that Vorgon ship and its crew. They might send reinforcements or open fire from orbit. Daniels would transport down to the facility in an attempt to find Cal. He would discover that the Vorgon were attempting to kidnap the scientist. While Daniels assisted in freeing Cal from his captors, the Vorgon battleship would power up its weapons and lock onto the Noir. Jor-El would order battle stations and the Sovereign would engage the battleship. Luckily, even though the Vorgon ship was presumably more powerful than the Sovereign, given the Sovereign is 25th century tech and the Vorgon was either a timeship or 27th century technology, the crew of the Noir would be able to hold off and even defeat the enemy vessel. After Daniels had secured Dano and made sure he was safe, the commander of the battle cruiser would hail the Noir. The captain would identify himself as Baratus of the VSV Arborel. He would demand to know why Jarrell and his crew had engaged them. This is Baratus, commander of the VSV Arborel. You are interfering with the private matter that does not concern you. Jarrell would introduce himself and point out that the Arborel had fired on the Noir first. My name is Azur. Baratus and I pursue a researcher named Caldano, and have been for some time. He has created a weapon of mass destruction. A very valuable weapon. The Tox Uthat and its maker will be ours. Our reinforcements are en route. You should not have interfered. A woman by the name of Ager would take over the comms and state that they were attempting to capture Cal and his device. She noted that they had already called for reinforcements and both the scientist and the device would be captured regardless of what the Noir did. Daniels and Cal would beam up to the Sovereign and temporal fissures would surround the Noir as reinforcements had arrived for the Aberel. Daniels assured the captain of the Noir that disabling or destroying these ships would not impact the timeline as they were not from this era. I, um, uh, I suppose it's good that Daniel cares about impacting the timeline here, and there won't be any point where you kill tens to hundreds of personnel of the specific era you're in, not, like, ten minutes later, or have an impact on a huge event that would really devastate the Federation. I'm, uh, I'm glad that's, uh, that's not gonna happen. During the battle, Cal Dano would launch from the USS Noir in the time ship, and the Noir would provide covering fire as he escaped. The Sovereign would defeat the ships, and the VSV Arborel would enter into the temporal subspace to get away. The Noir would be in a hot pursuit. Jarral and his crew would now find himself in 2152, near an engagement with a disabled Enterprise NX-01 as the Sulaban and Tholian forces fought each other around it. 
Kyle Dano would be dead. His body and ship had been recovered by the NX-01. Both the Sulaban and the Tholians were attempting to take it from the Enterprise. The Noir would intercept the Arborel to prevent it from being able to hijack the capsule and corpse of Cal Dano from the NX-01 Enterprise. Oh yeah, um, Cal died. Doesn't really explain much about it beyond that. The Arborel somehow would be completely repaired and once again the Noir would be able to defeat it. Joriel and his crew would be able to retrieve the body in the ship, causing the Sulaban to immediately withdraw from the encounter. And then the Noir would be approached by the 22nd century Tholians. Not time ships. Not from another era. Nope. 22nd century Tholians, a part of the Tholian Empire. vessels. You are temporal anomalies. You do not belong. Your chronicon signature matches a vessel we seek. We will know why. Submit to investigation or you will be purged. Tholian Captain, we are not aligned with these interlopers. In fact, we would be happy to ally with you against them. The Lion's proposal refused. You are anomalous. They are anomalous. You will all be purged. And after the Tholians opened fire on the Sovereign, the Noir would return fire and destroy them. Kill every last current era Tholian that had engaged them. Yeah. The Arborel would again escape and the Noir would be in hot pursuit. The ship would come out of the Temporal Anomaly in 2375, stardate 52617.86, at Earth. During the Breen attack on Earth, in the Dominion War. Daniels would explain that the Utat had not been destroyed by Picard, as many thought, but had been shipped back to Starfleet Command and put under heavy guard. Given the Vorgon thought it had been destroyed, Daniels surmised there must be someone helping them since they are now trying to obtain it again. The Noir would be approached by a Breen ship, and not only would the Noir destroy it, it would go on to destroy several patrols going out of its way to do so. But why stop there? The Noir would engage and destroy the flagship, after clearing a path in space to Earth, again by killing hundreds of Breen officers, the captain and bridge crew would transport down to the heavily fortified Starfleet installation. They would then go on to kill a ton of then interact with Starfleet personnel, talk with them, ask them about random Vorgons, and then leave. No explanations, no attempt to wipe their memories, just the random officers in different outfits show up with advanced weaponry and shielding, something they didn't have in 24th century and talk about Vorgons, and then be on their way. They would find Baratus and Ajor along with a mystery person. I have brought you this far, and you still will not join me? No, Envoy. Your war with the Federation doesn't concern us. Only the Dark's Quithon matters. Nothing else. We are not alone in that pursuit, as you can see. These must be the meddlers you spoke of, Bortus. Kill them quickly. After a brief fight, Ager would be killed and Baratus would escape. The crew would find the Utat and have it transported somewhere else safe. Though, I'm sure Starfleet will assume the Breen now have the weapon of mass destruction. Once again, Daniels would stumble back and have grievous wounds, though he would decline any attempts to help, and for now, Jarrell would relent. I'll, I'll be fine. We need to focus. Find the toxic tot. Afraid that's need to know information. And right now, you don't need to know. I'm sorry, but there are things bigger than this to worry about. Once again, Jarrell and his crew had fought bravely and stopped the timeline from being corrupted. But yesterday's war wasn't over. Yet. Hey guys, thanks so much. If you like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the pound button. It is the only way to become a lore master. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And guys, I'm going to see you on the next.
Lore Reloaded.